Welcome to the God's Love Bank Facebook Live Show. This is Dr. Tony Roach. We value your presence. We appreciate you chiming in with us today. And we certainly are thankful for all of you who are tuning in with us who are newcomers on, on the show. We appreciate your presence and we always want to encourage you to chime in with us. Let me tell you a little bit about what God's Love Bank Facebook Live show is really all about. We call it a show because it is based on Romans chapter nine, verse 17 through 23, where you remember when God uh, used Paul to explain Moses's purpose. He says, for this very purpose, we have rose you up or raised you up to show God's power, to proclaim God's name and to make known God's glory. And so what we want to do on this show is we want to always show God's power. We want to proclaim God's name, Jesus's name, and we want to make known God's glory. So during this show, there are times when we will do things to show the power of God. We will do things to proclaim God's name, and then we'll do things always to make sure we make known the glory of God. That's really the intent behind the God's Love Bank program. If you ask me, what is God's Love Bank? I would say to you, I am God's Love Bank and so are you. My spirit, my soul and my body function and operate as God's Love Bank and so does yours. It started in the beginning in Genesis chapter two and verse number seven, where the Bible says God formed man from the dust of the ground he breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Then God created man in his own image. In Genesis chapter one, verses 26 to 27, the Bible says, God said, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness. What we find from that passage is that God is a relational being. He spoke to God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. He said, let us make man in our own image. And so what we learned then is that the image of God is what we were created after. And what we learned from that is that Hebrew word for the word image is copy. In other words, God made us a copy of himself. No wonder the Bible says over in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse number nine, God is the father of spirits. Jesus said, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what we learn then is that God is a spirit. He created us a copy of himself. Therefore we are spirits. We have souls, we live in bodies. The threefold spiritual being comes from the notion of the Trinity, the triune God, where you talk about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So that's who we are in the sight of God. And therefore, when we find that part of us and understand who we are, then we must understand something else that happened. Something else awful happened in the human saga. Once Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they gave birth or that sin gave birth to a concept, a phenomenon called the old self. And the old self, when it came into the world, it had no place to reside. So it found its residence in our original self. It corrupted our original self. And therefore old self became a phenomenon that has been wrecking, ruling and ruining people's lives all over the globe. And what we got to understand is that that old self has to be put off. So Paul then commands us through the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter four, verses 22 through 24. In the NIV, he said, you were taught with regards to your former way of life to put off your old self and its deceitful lust and to be made new in the spirit of your mind and put on your new self, which is created in true righteousness and holiness. And then there are other passages of scripture where uh, the old self is mentioned. But the good news is that the bad news is a lie because the Bible says in Romans chapter six, verse five and six, that the old self was crucified. I'm speaking from the NIV again, because it's more accurate than 
uh, the, the translation that talks about the old man or the old nature. He says the old self was crucified with Christ that we might rise up to walk in the newness of life. And it is now, uh, it has been rendered uh, powerless over us. So the old self does not have to control us, but we also, in addition to that, we must understand that it does not control us, but we got to put off the old self. And that's the responsibility that Paul is talking about in Ephesians chapter four, verses 22 through 24, and in Colossians chapter three, verses nine and 10, both in the NIV. So we want to welcome everybody on the show today. It's always good to see you. We see uh, on the show right now, we see Trey, Trey carry on on the show. We see Carolyn, we see Ali, we see D. Appreciate you being on the show, Roz and Kevin and Kenan and Chalzetta. We appreciate you being on the show, Jeannie and Curtis and Jerry and John uh, and Sharika and Janice and uh, uh, Crystal. We appreciate all of you on the show. We have developed what uh, I consider to be a family uh, of the God's Love Bank family. So we appreciate your, your presence. Now, if you are a newcomer on the show, we want you to know that you can learn what your old self love story and your old self love home base is in approximately three minutes. And you can learn what your new self love story is in approximately about the same amount of time. And let's be clear, everybody on the face of the earth, every human being that's alive, have old self and all of us pretty much have old self love. And what we got to understand, it doesn't matter if you are black or white or Asian or Hispanic, whether you're educated, uneducated, whether you live in Africa, or whether you live in the Philippines, every person on the face of the earth as a result of the fall now have a multi-generational phenomenon that has, uh, uh, it affected and dominates their life, whether they know it or not, called old self love. So if you want to know what your old self love story is, you can go to my website and you will learn what your old self love story is in approximately three minutes. You can learn that on the website called oldselfnewself.com, oldselfnewself.com. And then you can go there also and get my books and you can learn more about your old self-love and your new self-love at godslovebank.com, godslovebank.com. All of the books and all of the material, you get that from that, that website. Amen? Okay, so with that understanding, I want to go back to announce some announcements that we made on yesterday. Uh, I made it known that we will be meeting now instead of five days a week at one o'clock central time. I'm going to be conducting this show on Tuesdays and Thursdays, one o'clock central time. Please make that known to everybody that you do know. And we uh, encourage you to continue to meet with us on Tuesdays and Thursdays, one o'clock central time. Now, I'm also gonna start on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, a concept called one minute love deposits. One minute love deposits. And I may not do that at one o'clock. I may do it earlier in the day because this will be a love deposit for a person or people so that they can use that love deposit throughout the day. So let me rehearse again. Starting today, we are going to be meeting on Tuesdays and Thursdays, one o'clock central time. No longer will we be meeting five days a week. Tuesdays and Thursdays, one o'clock central time. I will also begin to start doing one minute love deposits and I will let you know when that time will take place. Also on yesterday, we talked about uh, what we're going to be calling God's Love Bank study groups. God's Love Bank study groups. On next Tuesday, Crystal Smith and I will come on and I 
will be interviewing her and we'll be talking about the criteria for the God's Love Bank study groups. And uh, we encourage everybody who was interested in the God's Love Bank study groups to let us know on yesterday. Now, I did mention that we would call the God's Love Bank leaders facilitators. Let me rephrase that. They will be called God's Love Bank uh, uh, group leaders, God's Love Bank group leaders. God's Love Bank facilitators will be those people that I will certify and train, and they will be able to use the God's Love Bank material as well as the God's Love Bank uh, uh, concepts when they are training uh, other groups. So that is not coming yet. I'm going to be talking about that. Some people contacted me and said they wanted to be certified. Well, let's be clear. The, the God's Love Bank training, God's Love Bank have multiple levels. It's not something that you can just learn off the surface of it and you, you articulate it. You can share those concepts, but you need to be trained to be certified as a God's Love Bank facilitator, okay? And then I'm gonna eventually have new self-love life coaches, okay? So there are some people who want to uh, uh, use this in, in, uh, in their lives and, and uh, and they want to have programs. We, My copyright attorney has vigorously told me to make sure that it's clear to people that that would be violating the copyright laws when it comes to certification and training. So I wanted to make that clear. Now, let me rehearse again. So anybody who have any questions, we're going to be starting God's Love Bank study groups. And the God's Love Bank study groups will start with my books and at the end of each chapter there are study questions for the uh the groups to meditate on and talk about and we'll talk about in detail more about that on next tuesday and i have uh appointed crystal smith she will be the coordinator on helping us to develop these god's love bank study groups so let me see if there's any questions about anything I've said. Put it on the screen. Put it in your chat box on the screen, the comments, and I will respond to them at this time. While you're doing that, Tuesdays and Thursdays, please continue to stay with us. We got a lot to do, and we're taking God's Love Bank Global. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 o'clock Central Time. Amen? Uh, All right, so if nobody have any questions, what I want to talk to us about today is called basically uh, the five stations of your gift journey. The five stations of your gift journey. How to identify, awaken, and unleash your gift. Now I need to clarify some more things concerning this, okay? The gift journey book is complete. The way I'm gonna distribute the gift journey books is I am be, I'm going to have a virtual webinar conference called One Day to the Discovery of Your Gift. At that conference, people will get copies of the book, the gift journey, okay? And so I will be letting you know the date when we will have the one day to the discovery of your gift. And we'll be talking about how that takes place. Now, for those of you who attended the God's Love Bank Institute, the 2020 God's Love Bank Institute, as a compliment, it was complimentary, I gave out books. And what I found out later that those books had a lot of errors in it because my copyright, or not my copyright, my editor did not edit the book after she got focused on the grammatical, not the grammatical, but the structure of the book. And it had so many errors. I sent all those books. Well, I didn't send them back. I had to destroy those books. And then I rewrote the book and I improved it. I found out some things that God was giving me that gave me better understanding of what the gift journey is really all about. 
And so the Holy Spirit turned a withdrawal into a deposit. The new book is clearer. The new book has more information about how to do it. And that book is the book that I have now. Now, I'm going to distribute those books at the uh, God's, uh, at the one day to your gift uh, uh, webinar. It'll be virtual. Uh, and, and and those who attend that will get a copy of the book. Now, those of you who I gave as a complimentary book at the Institute, when I released the other books at the God's Love Bank virtual conference, one day to the discovery of your gift, then what I'm going to do there is you send me the copy of your book and I will send you a copy of the book for five dollars. That's how much it'll cost if you go through the post office. OK, but I'm not going to release the books until we have the one day virtual conference because I want to spend a day where we're talking about the books and you'll have the copy of the book in hand right before the conference. I will be letting everybody know when that conference will take place. It'll be a virtual uh, a conference uh, online. OK, so if you have any questions, you can post your questions right now. Meanwhile, let me just talk about why it's important to understand uh, this, this notion of, of, of discovering your gift. So first of all, you need to understand your gift is God's investment to you. How you invest your gift is your return on God's investment. Let me say that again, your gift, is God's investment to you. How you invest your gift is your return on God's investment. And ladies and gentlemen, in this book, I talk about how to discover your 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 uh, your gift. And if you'll look at the trailer on my website, you'll see that this journey starts and it, it'll, it'll go into more detail. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. So it's important to understand that your gift is God's investment to you. How you invest your gift is your return on God's investment. So we're going to talk about what is your gift and we're going to talk about it in detail. We're going to help people to discover what their uh, unique and special gift is. We will also talk about what is your purpose. See, what we're going to learn is that your gift leads to your purpose and your purpose leads to your destiny and your destiny is what you do on earth and in the life to come. So let me back up. What is your gift? We'll be talking about that. OK. And that's what the webinar is going to cover. That's what that one day to uh, 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 we are talking about a full day, uh, one day to the discovery of your gift. And you will also see how that connects to your purpose and then ultimately how that connects to your destiny. So, so what happens is your gift leads to your calling. Your calling leads to your purpose. Your purpose leads to your destiny. And that destiny is what you do on earth and in the life to come. So we'll be talking about uh, this notion of the gift journey at the virtual conference. And uh, we'll be going into detail. We'll be providing a copy of the book for everybody who signed up for the conference, okay? Those of you who I said I was gonna give a complimentary copy. See, the registration at the God's Love Bank Institute, that, it, that covered the things that you got, and you got a lot. I always give a lot. I believe that that's how you create prosperity of your soul. You always give. And I always give more than enough. I try to do that deliberately. So at the at the Institute, I gave a complimentary copy to those people who were there and they know who they are. You will be able to get uh, 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 the corrected copy when I do this at the God's Love Bank. 
uh, virtual conference where we'll be talking about one day to the discovery of your gift. So keep that in mind. And we'll be talking about that in, in more in more detail. So now uh, what I want to do is just give you some reasons why you want to uh, understand this whole notion of the gift journey. Because what you will learn is that the gift journey is a powerful rendition of all of the God's love and concepts. And they tie into it. And basically what the gift journey really is all about. Let me give you an idea. The gift journey is a spiritual novel that starts with a narrative depicting a perfect life for identical twin boys called Old Sella and New Sella, who are the main characters of the story. Now, you already have been studying about Old Self, New Self, so you can kind of get a drift of what uh, uh, Old Sella and New Sella is all about. They are identical twins, and they were born just a few minutes apart from one another. So the story erupts into chaos when a gift uh, that the twins' father left to them is stolen from a safety deposit box, which creates a struggle for the twin boys. And as the story evolves, the twins make a, a series of choices in the midst of their struggles that sends them on a journey toward the seven wonders of the world. That's why when you see my, my trailer, uh, it shows the seven wonders of the world. And they went on this journey to find their father and this mysterious gift, which ultimately affected the destiny of their lives on earth and in the life to come forever. Now, as they began to journey along the way, they meet several inspiring people who gives them life-changing advice insightful wisdom and powerful principles about this life and happiness in this life. So while they are journeying, they come in contact with some unique personalities who happen to be uh, uh, people of wisdom, sages, teachers, uh, all type of people as they journey to try to find their father in this mysterious gift. And although their quest to find their father in the gift uh, is what they are really looking for. No one really knows what exactly the gift is, only the father. So their, their, their quest and their desire to find the father helps them to deal with this, this identical twin dilemma, old seller and new seller. And throughout the story, the twins are both confronted with multiple challenges in their life as they search for the missing gift. And what you find in this story is a silhouette and, 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 a, and, a, and a, a, a storytelling way of helping people to understand powerful concepts about the old self and the new self. What starts out as a journey to find this missing gift turns into the discovery of the most powerful gift in the universe. Once you understand this gift and what it is, it becomes powerful for you too and it can activate the laws of the universe to begin to collaborate and conspire to help you be successful in whatever you do in life. So the gift journey is a spiritual expedition that is deeply personal, yet profoundly universal. Written in a three-part narrative, it relates to all people of all cultures, of all ages, while at the same time speaking directly to you. It's like Michael Jackson's song. It's bad and it's a it's a it's an easy read so that you can read in a, 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 se a sequential order to ultimately discover your gift and how it will affect your purpose and your destiny on this earth. Amen. Okay, so let me give you some reasons why you should be interested uh, in learning what your gift is and going on what I call the gift journey. Number one, when you identify and awaken and unleash your gift, and let me, let me repeat that. When you identify 
and awaken. So obviously your gift is laying dormant within you. You have to identify it. Then you got to awaken it and then release your gift. When you do that, when you identify, awaken and unleash your gift, you will discover why you were shaped the way you were shaped and why God designed you the way you are. Now that's important. In Psalms uh, 139, he talks about how he shaped us in our mother's womb. You see, ladies and gentlemen, your gift was given to you before you were born. And what we gotta begin to understand is that is really what the devil attacks and uses the old self as the medium to attack because he don't want you to discover what your gift is because after all, when you discover what your gift is, you discover why you were shaped the way you were shaped. That means your spirit, soul, and body, why you were shaped the way you were shaped and why God designed you the way he designed you. That's why this whole notion of the gift journey is a journey. You can't just discover your gift just because you get the concept. It's like the three dimensional laws of expediency. Uh, you can know the laws, you can quote them, but until you go on the journey and live, live it and make it real in your life, you don't understand the three laws of, of, of expediency. And these are three laws that many leaders need to know about and a lot of churches need to know about. And every person can take advantage of the three dimensional laws of expediency. In the same way, every person, uh, if you identify, then awaken and then unleash your gift. See, you can actually uh, be operating in your gift and don't know it because you haven't identified it. And when you haven't identified your gift and you don't know it, you will tend to, ne to neglect it. You will tend to play it down. There are some people who are afraid of their gift because they really think that it's, it's too brilliant for them. It, it's too much for them. So if you don't identify and then awaken it, you can unleash your gift, which, which suggests to us that you have a power within you that is really given to you by God, shaped in you when you were born. In fact, even before you were born, it was shaped in you and you were designed with a divine design and a custom-made gift to help you to fulfill a custom-made purpose. And that's so very powerful. Okay, let me give you a second reason for the discovery of your gift and why you should go on the gift journey. When you identify, awaken, and unleash your gift, it will explain why you are good at certain things and not so good at other things. There are a lot of people who spend their time doing things that they're not good at because they get paid for doing it or because somebody told them that they should do it or, so, or parents sometimes tell people or uh, raise their children and tell them what they should be. When in reality, when you identify and awaken uh, and unleash your gift, it will explain why you are good at mathematics, why you are good at statistics, why you are good at, at, at coming up with uh, idealistic ideas or why you are good at certain things. And then over here, you doing something that you really are not good at. 80% of the people who go to college and get careers, go into careers that later on in life, they hate doing what they're doing because they spend so much time focusing on a career that was not connected to their gift. So consequently, they go for the making of the money instead of the focusing on their gift. There are a lot of people who are preoccupied with their money and making money at the expense of their gift. But when I identify, I got to first identify, then I got to awaken it. Then I got to unleash my gift. Then it will give me insight on why I'm good at talking. Now, everybody talks, but certain people are at home with talking. Everybody can do specific things, but some people are just masters in it. 
And so what we got to understand then is number two, when you identify, awaken, and unleash your gift, what it does for you is helps you to understand what you're best at, what you're good at, and why you're good at it. And that is extremely important. Let me give you another reason. Another reason for uh, the importance of going on the gift journey, and I keep emphasizing it, it is a journey. It's not a one-time zap process. You'll find that old seller and new seller goes on this gift journey and the Holy Spirit reveals to them along the way through multiple characters, through multiple experiences. And as you go through life, you will come in contact with people who will help you to discover what your gift is and what your purpose is and what your destiny is. That's why it's not something you can just do all of a sudden. And it's not something that you can get. That's why it's important for us to have the training uh, this webinar uh, 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 on, on the gift journey, because it's a journey through life. Now, there are a lot of people who say, well, life is a journey. Well, I'm talking about something different. Your gift journey is really what determines how significant your life is. Life itself is just you live and you die. And as it is appointed unto man wants to die, and after that come the judgment. But the gift journey is a process of following your gift wherever it leads you and consulting with the Holy Spirit along the way so that you will find out what your calling is and then what your purpose is and then what your destiny is on this side of eternity, which ultimately affects your destiny on the other side of eternity. So number three, when you identify and awaken and unleash your gift, it will explain why you have a strong passion and high energy for some things, and yet you have no passion and low energy for other things. There's some of us right now, you're working on jobs right now where you don't have any passion for it. I mean, you, 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 you just uh, uh, are low in your energy because you may be doing something that's not connected and aligned with your divine design and your gift is your divine design. It helps you to be what God created you to be. The interesting thing about the gift, God's love bank really helps you to be what your gift is and do what you need to do when you discover what your gift is. So when you identify and awaken and unleash your gift, it will explain why you have strong energy and why you're passionate about what you're doing or why you are not passionate and you have low energy. And so a lot of times, a lot of people will settle and don't do anything. Like I retired to refire. Now, I did not have to retire. I have been working with the ministry church. We established that church, developed the church. We uh, trained elders and deacons. Uh, uh, we, God blessed us to pay off all of the deeds, all of the mortgages. And listen, we got a lot of land there. Somebody would say, well, why did you choose to retire? I chose to retire so I could refire because my gift was leading me to another adventure, another level of my journey. And that is taking God's love bank global. And that's why you see me doing what I'm doing right now. Now, what are you saying, Dr. Roach? I'm passionate about this. You know why? Because my gift is connected to it. But there are so many people who retire and, and don't get me wrong. I think retirement is a time to rest. I think it's retirement is the time to uh, take it easy, do what you want to do, travel or whatever you want to do. But sitting around, and not having passion for something, to me is not retirement. Why? Because God let us know your gift is God's investment to you. How you invest your gift is your return on God's investment. God didn't just give you a gift so that you can just have it. He didn't just shape you with a gift and give you a divine design just to make sure you can be on earth and do your thing. He gave you a gift so you can fulfill your calling and fulfill your calling into your purpose and merge your purpose into your destiny so that when you 
stand before God, you will have a profit that you made. You've given your life and you'll be able to say, Lord, this is what you gave me. This gift is what you gave me. This is how I invested my gift. This is what I did with my gift. You will be surprised how many people take life for granted and just conclude that life is what they are blessed with for their own benefit. You were blessed with life for God's benefit. And it's, it's, it's throughout the whole Bible, really. When you look at uh, uh, from Genesis to Revelation, every person that was ever created was created by God's divine design. I'm telling you, you're not a genetic mistake or a cosmic accident. God created you for a purpose and he gave you the gift to fulfill your purpose. So when we talk about this at this uh, one day to the discovery of your gift, we're going to go into details on why and, 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 and not just uh, understand it, but we're going to help people to know, hopefully when you leave the webinar, uh, when you leave this conference, you will know what your gift is and how to apply it in a way where you can bring God a profit with your life and then give him a return on his investment in you. Amen. So, so let's be clear. You got to identify your gift. It, it, you know, just because you're alive don't mean you know what your gift is. And just because you're good at something don't mean you know what your, your gift is. I, I'll go into a little more detail, but let me tell you something. Uh, your, your, your talents is what you're good at. Your gift is what you're best at. God's love bank helps you to discover and know what that's all about, your talents and your gift. A lot of people get preoccupied with their talents at the expense of their gift. And what we got to understand then is that we got to know the difference. And that's what we'll be talking about in more detail at this virtual webinar conference on a one day to the discovery of your gift. Let me give you another reason why it's important to go on the gift journey. When you identify, awaken, and unleash your gift, let me stop there for a moment on this awaken concept. See, your gift was created in you before you were even born. Before the foundation of the earth, God created you with your gift. It's inside of you. It has to be awakened. How do you awaken? First, you got to identify it. Then you got to awaken it. And there's some things you can do to awaken it. Then you got to unleash your gift. And when you do, it will help you to understand why certain things come easy to you and other things don't. I, uh, 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 my son has a friend and she is just brilliant. She's just brilliant. And, uh, 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 she just have this gift. Okay. Now, maybe she was designed to be a neuroscientist or maybe she was designed to be a statistician. Whatever the case may be, whatever your gift is, it's, it, it's aligned to what ultimately will be your purpose. Now, it also affects the type of careers that you choose in life. There are a lot of people who are wandering generalities rather than single-minded specifics. What are you saying, Dr. Rose? There are a lot of people who get their gifts and their talents mumbled and jumbled with one another, and consequently, they go through life as a wandering generality rather than a single-minded specific. They're, they're like a pinball in a pinball machine. And whatever comes up, boom, boom, boom. They go from job to job or up here, they get a little more money here, they go there or they can get an opportunity here, they go there. And, and so they're like a pinball in a pinball machine, machine being knocked from one thing to another because they don't understand you were created for a purpose. And God never creates any of his creations without first of all giving it them the gift or giving it the gift to fulfill the purpose. You see, as a matter of fact, Christianity, really, when we really single into it and hone into it, it's about discovering what your gift is. So it will lead to your calling. So it will lead to your purpose. So it will lead to your destiny. And when your gift merges with your purpose and, and, and your purpose merges with your destiny, you will ultimately learn what your destiny is on this side of eternity and ultimately dictate and determine your destiny on the other side. This is why it's so important 
to really get excited about the opportunity to know more and learn more about your gift. See, your gift will help you to understand why am I good at certain things? When I was younger, I did not know this, but I, uh, I, I could sell. I always could sell. I mean, as a child, I was an entrepreneur in my own house. My sisters could not go out at night. And, and as I got a little older, my dad and mom would let me go out at night. Well, I would go down the street to the store and back there doing that, and they sold mint juleps and banana splits. They were two pieces of candy that you can get for a nickel and you get two pieces of candy, mint juleps or banana splits. Well, I would go down to the store, buy the mint juleps and the banana splits, and I'd come back home and set up a store in our house and sell my sisters. I had six sisters and, 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 and a younger brother, and I would sell them mint juleps for, sometimes I would sell them for a dime, sometimes for a quarter. I made 100% profit on my profits while I was young. I just did that naturally. And then I, I, could, I would always sell. I found in the calling post a paper, a, a place where you could buy these cards that had these, uh, these uh, uh, forums on it or statements on it. I then as a child contacted the people who made those cards from the calling post had them cards sent to me and I went around the whole community selling those cards. I made quite a bit of money and I was just a kid. But I'll tell you something else I'm not proud of. As I got to be a teenager, I started doing things like stealing pop bottles off of the back porch of our neighbors. See, back there during that time, you could uh, you could get pop bottles and if you got a, a, a Coke bottle or, or a Sunkist bottle, uh, they were a nickel a piece. And if you got a milk bottle, that was a quarter. And so consequently, I started doing things that I'm not proud of today. I would sneak behind people's backyard and get their pop bottles and I'd take them to the store, cash them in and make money. What were you doing? I was violating my gift. See, another thing about your gift, when you don't know what your gift is, you will tend to violate your gift or you'll neglect it or you'll play it down. All I'm saying is when you identify, awaken, and unleash your gift, it will help you to understand why you're good at certain things and why you're not so good at other things. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Got a few minutes. Anybody want to make a comment or anybody got questions? Go right ahead. Okay, here's Charles Zeta. She says, was the gift given at the time of physical birth or spiritual birth? Now, by the way, there are some things I'm not going to answer right now. I'm going to encourage you to come to uh, the virtual uh, one day to discovery of your gift conference. But now I'll answer this question for the sake of, of the question. Was the, was the gift given at the time of physical birth? No, your gift was given to you even before you were born before the foundation of the earth, when God shaped you and when he made you, he gave in you the gift. Now, you also asked another question or a spiritual birth. There's a difference between the inherent gift that you get before the foundation of the earth and spiritual gifts that are really designed for the edification of people in the church or the body of Christ. So there's a difference between spiritual gift and the inherent gift that you get when you were created before the foundation of the earth. Okay, so so uh, uh, now there, remember now there's certain questions I'm gonna I'm not gonna answer until we get to the virtual conference. Okay, here's another question. Okay, Kenan is quoting some things that he learned when I did a workshop there. Your gift is what you made for. Your talents is what you paid for. Your purpose is what you saved for. Well, let, let me just clarify that. God's love bank is what you saved for because it helps you to discover what your purpose is. So your gift is what you made for. Your talents is what you paid for. Uh, and your purpose, God's love bank, is what you were saved for. He says, please elaborate. Okay. I Now, remember now, I'm not going to go into details on certain things. Hey, D. D said, seems like 
This gift journey will lead you to what God's incarnate for the gift. Preach on, Doc. Okay, I hear you, Deep. Say that again so I can get even further clarification on it. All right. Uh, let's let's see here. Uh, okay, let me see if there's any other comments here. Erica Payne says, how will you be contacting those of us who want to be a part of a group? Okay. What's going to happen on the God's Love Bank study groups? Okay, there will be uh, uh, people on Tuesday, next Tuesday, Crystal Smith will come on and we're going to talk about the God's Love Bank study groups. And we will also uh, identify who wants to be in the groups. Then uh, we will start making some decisions on helping people to be in the groups. And we'll give a lot of uh, freedom for you to be in a group that you want to be in. Now, I, I do want to clarify. I, I Yesterday, I, I used the term facilitators of the group. That is not the proper term. It'll be just leaders of the group. They will be the leader. They will lead the discussions based on the questions in the back of each chapter of my book. And so what we're going to do is on Tuesday, we're going to go into more detail. And then we're going to talk about how we can get people in the various groups and then we're going to get started on them. And remember, those groups will be meeting every other week. And we will also have times when we will chime in uh, uh, to those groups, even myself and uh, the group leaders. OK, here's Nate. Nate says, yes, I remember uh, those days selling the bottles. <laughs> I also remember selling Bibles at the church in Cleveland. <laughs> Nate, do you remember when I was selling Bibles at the church in Cleveland, Ohio? See, I've been selling all my life. Let me tell you what happened. Brother Winston had, had this Bible called the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. And so I was afraid to go into ministry because I thought that people would keep you broke as Job's turkey and they want you to act like you rich as Abraham. So I didn't trust going into ministry. So I decided what I would do is I would open up a Bible bookstore. So in order to open up a Bible bookstore, I started selling Bibles. And Brother Winston used to have contact with this uh, company uh, where I could buy the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. I sold thousands of those Bibles. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things that helped me to meet my wife. She became my accountant at uh, at church. Nate also uh, went to uh, 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 the church in, in in Cleveland, Ohio, and so all I'm saying is I've been I've been talking and using my gift, and I'll tell you what that is when we get to the conferences. Uh, uh, all of my life, and whatever your gift is, I'm saying a little too much. You inherited before you were born, so it was naturally a part of you when you were young, and a lot of times we violate our gift. Uh, because we don't know what it is. Oh my goodness, I'm going over time again. I got to stop right here, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you. We'll see you on Tuesday, uh, next week. Tuesdays and Thursdays, one o'clock central time. That's the new time we'll be meeting. Please continue to support and 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 uh, chime in to the God's Love Bank Facebook Live show. I will be putting in the announcements on Facebook Live so you'll know that it's taking place. Amen. Thank you so much. Let it be so.